All great changes are preceded by chaos. Deepak Chopra. Progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. George Bernard Shaw. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. In these changing turbulent times of deception and control by the powerful elites, sharing Saint Germain's celestial message is crucial for our planetary understanding and evolvement as a species. Unveiling the spiritual battle between good and evil, it aims to awaken minds to the orchestrated reality we face. It's time to open our minds, recognize manipulation, and collectively seek the truth over lies. Embrace enlightenment and discernment as we delve into the Ascended Master's vital insight. Learn to sense and embrace big changes coming fast. Violinio Saint Germain. Tuesday, the 28th of September, 1999. With all the seismic activity and violent weather patterns that have been taking place of late, are taking place at present, and shall be occurring in your very near future, I believe that it is time that we repeat a lesson from two years ago. Yes, I am Violinio Saint Germain. I come to you in and with the pure white light radiance of Holy God of Creation. I am Kohan Teacher, of the Seventh Ray, the Violet Ray, the Ray associated with transmutation. Your planet Earth is changing. Change cannot be stopped, for in order that change cease, then all would merely cease to exist. It would not be destroyed, rather, it would be as though nothing ever was. Change means that creation is a continuing process, and once change ceases, then creation ceases, and that is the point where all in this physical universe would merely not be. Your planet itself is undergoing massive changes, and it is time you once had a refresher in what these changes are all about. You have experienced several massive earthquakes of late, and you are going to see much, much more of the same. The scenes you have been witness to recently will likely become very commonplace as time progresses. You once look upon these earth changes as destruction. A very informative and important article on the plate tectonics of your planet is being offered, in the same October, 1999, issue of the spectrum wherein first appeared this message from Germain. This piece is excellent in explaining why the surface of the earth is so volatile. And considering that which has been occurring, and that which is yet likely to occur, it is extremely important that you ones have some correct understanding of the physical laws which govern the physical universes. We have already covered so many of these subjects in great depth in the past. You are at a time now in which you are seeing manifest in your daily lives that which we have spoken of in the past. So many of these topics are interwoven with each other that it becomes difficult for you ones to remember where one topic ends and another begins. We are also including here some material which has previously been given to this receiver but which should now be shared with a wider audience. We have two reasons for doing this, one, so that you will have these lessons afresh for the upcoming times, and, two, so that you will know that what we have spoken in the past is coming to pass in the present and in the coming days. The overall reason for this is so that you may know that God is God, and is very much at the helm of the ongoing process of creation. The following is a writing of mine through this receiver from the 28th of September, 1997, exactly two years ago. It was published at that time in the December, 1997, issue of the Sedona Journal of Emergence. Quoting. 
your role in your ever-changing world. If there is one thing that is absolutely certain, it is that everything changes. Nothing in the living, vibrant, experimental universe is stagnant. There are changes occurring right now upon planet Earth that are both exciting and frightening to those experiencing these changes. However, to be gripped by fear, or to sit around and merely fret about what is going on, is neither productive nor wise, for these are the times you have come to this planet to experience and to learn from. If you allow yourselves to be overwhelmed by the changes, then life and circumstances will control you, but, you can take control of your life and those same circumstances, dispel the fear, and maybe, just maybe, you will not only profit in these times of tumultuous change, but will maintain the peace of God while all is seemingly crumbling about you. By the way, and thank you for asking, I am Jermaine. I represent the violet ray, the ray of transmutation, of the white light of holy god of creation. And, let me just say that transmutation is what this time of change is all about. When you see all these changes occurring around you, and though some things may seem to be destructive, know that in the whole of the universe nothing is ever destroyed. Though it may no longer exist in the same form as you have been used to, it has not really gone anywhere, it has merely changed its form. You learned this basic law of physics when you were in elementary school science class, by seeing how water can change its form from a solid, ice, to a liquid water, to a gas, steam. Well, this is the case with all matter in the universe. There is so much talk these days about the destructive nature of the planet in the way of earthquakes, volcanoes, rain, wind, storms, etc. Yet, the creator only expresses in creation. You live in a dual universe, light-dark, hot-cold, male-female, etc. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is your perception of the physical realm, for all is but a part of the ongoing creation. When the tectonic plates shift, some land above the surface tends to submerge below the surface while, on the opposite side of that same plate, new land begins to push its way back up to the surface. Yet, what is really happening, and what is your perception of it? Well, the truth is that while some of the land may submerge, and along with it may go some of man's structures, Mother Earth is merely recreating herself, and the land going down becomes a part of the mantle, where it returns back into the semi liquid state, while on the opposite side of the tectonic plate, that which was part of the mantle, and was in the semi-liquid state, resurfaces and changes to the solid state. So, can you see that, though from your limited perception it appears that the earth has destroyed something, she is merely in that continual state of creation? When the rains come and the flooding occurs, there are always homes that are washed away. You perceive that it is destructive. But truly it is only the earth once again recreating herself, old, worn out land is washed away, taken downstream, mixed with the water, and redeposited in another place. So, nothing has really been destroyed, it is only the earth replenishing herself. Mankind has taken the planet and nature for granted, depleting her resources at such a rapid rate that it is no wonder she is reacting in such a manner as you are experiencing. Man has decided that he has taken control and will dominate nature. But what man has not yet realized is that all are a part of that nature, and that, 
by attempting to dominate nature, man is but dominating himself at the same time. Man is not above natural law, but acts as though he is. Man's perception that he is greater and above nature is causing him to suffer the consequences of his own actions, and it shall continue until he has changed his mind set about his relationship with the rest of creation. There is a recent film called Phenomenon in which a man suddenly had what all perceived as extraordinary abilities. In one scene, he is sitting in a doctor's office and begins to move a pencil lying on the desk without touching the pencil. The doctor, of course, is stunned by what he is seeing, and asks the man how he does it. The man replies that he doesn't really know, but says that he just asks the pencil to cooperate, and the pencil begins to move. What happened there is that this man changed his perception of separateness and realized that he is part of the greater whole. He and that pencil are, in essence, no greater or lesser than the other. In fact, they are equally a part of the greater whole, so the only natural response is mutual cooperation. When mankind comes into the knowledge that he is no greater or lesser than anything else in the universe, then he will understand and be able to identify with all things, be they plant, animal, or mineral, so to speak. At the base of all things in the physical universe, all things are created out the same stuff. It is only the molecules and atoms that are arranged differently, but the molecules and atoms are the same. If you are all the same, then why is there the perception of separation? Earth has gone through many cycles of change in the past, and shall continue to do the same in the future. Change is the only constant in physical law. Without change, everything would cease to exist in a very short period of time. Motion is change, and without motion, there would be no time, nor would there be evolution. Some, I know, think this would be a good thing. However, lack of change would result very quickly in non-existence. You are all going to go forward, be it on Earth or somewhere else. You are all part of the ongoing cycle of change, all a part of the ever-expanding, dynamic universe. It is your resistance to that change, unfortunately, which is causing you so much grief and turmoil. There are those who are in control, the power brokers I believe they are called, and these are the ones who are the most resistant to the changes, for the changes will eventually bring about an end to their ability to remain in control. There is much fear with them about being unable to control someone or something. It comes from lack of faith or confidence in themselves, though this is not their own perception. They do not trust in themselves, therefore, they have even less trust of others. They truly believe that, unless they assume the control, those who are even less capable will take charge of everything, including themselves, and this causes them to be gripped by utter fear. Each of you experiencing in the third dimensional expression is having the same battle, albeit at different levels. It is much easier to identify those who are the leaders of your world, for they have a greater effect on a greater number of people and circumstances. Yet, if the truth were to be known, all are, to a greater or lesser degree, learning lessons about control. For some, the challenges of control might be within the family unit, parents wanting to control their children. With others, it may be on the job, wanting to control subordinate workers. You see, each is struggling with this issue and, until the lessons about control are learned, you will continue to struggle with it. 
If you examine yourselves closely and honestly, I think you will see that what I speak is truth. And, yes, truth is very often a difficult pill to swallow. The control that you ones are really seeking is within your own selves. However, because that is the most difficult to get a handle on, you tend to externalize the control and project it on others around you. The secret though it is not really a secret is that, if you ones were to actually take control over yourselves, you would find you would have very little need, time, or desire to control others. Believe me that self-control is a full-time job within itself. Each sees the difficulties in the world, and there is an inbred desire and need to do something about them. However, self-examination is very painful and most difficult, so it is much easier to tell someone else what they are doing wrong than to recognize and correct the wrong actions or thoughts of yourself. If each would merely live by the simplest of self-imposed ethics, there would be so little strife in the world. It has been called the golden rule, for it is a valuable little nugget indeed, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It is so simple, but so difficult for you to live by. All in the world is driven by the perceived need to gather more and more wealth. To what end? When is it ever enough? How much do you really need? Or, has desire and greed been misinterpreted as need? You have been told, and you obviously believe it, that you need material wealth in order to be successful. Yet, what is true success, and is it really money and things? What of the person who has nothing, but has found true peace within? Is that one a success or a failure in your perception? What kind of a price tag is there for inner peace, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? Ask that same person if they would trade their inner peace for a hundred thousand dollars, and then hear their response. The more time ones spend pursuing the wealth of materiality, the less inner peace will be found. However, if the pursuit, instead, is toward inner peace, always, your real needs will be met. The wondrous thing about achieving inner peace is also how the thirsty desire for things will be quenched. You see, mankind is actually wanting that inner peace, but once again, rather than going within the very depths of his soul, wherein lies the truth of things, he looks to the outer world to satisfy his hunger. He is looking to materiality to quench those inner desires, but finds that the more he gets, the more he wants, and so the self-destructive cycle is never-ending. And in the process he is also destroying his own planet. This material focus is most insidious in that more is never enough. And not only does he want what he believes to be his, he also wants what is someone else's, for that is the truly dark side of greed. Some go about it through common theft. Others go about it on a much larger scale through unfair, overburdened taxation. There is no difference, jealous, students, it is all greed in one form or another. How will this cycle ever be finished? Only when man awakens to the truth. That is a most difficult thing to predict, for it is totally up to each and every person, because each and every one has the same free will as the next. That free will is not prejudiced, and free will can be used to express both that which is of the light and the darkness. There is a bumper sticker which reads. The one with the most toys wins. Wins what? Think upon this, for the joke is really on you. Since the beginning of this particular cycle on earth, the perception has been that wealth is something that must be gathered from the outer world. 
This is also part of the lessons you once came here to learn. You have spent many past lifetimes upon this same planet, struggling with the same lessons. Now you are experiencing in this present time, where the temptation for things is greater than it has ever been before. It is final examination time, dear ones. Have you learned your lessons or not? How shall you score in the end of it? A very wise man once told you to look to nature and all its glorious splendor. He said for you to look at the lilies of the fields, for they do not toil, and yet they are clothed in beauty. The birds of the air do not work, and yet they are fed and free to fly where they will. Can from you say as much in your own lives? Probably not. Who and what cause the strife in your own life? Do you perceive it is your boss, your children, your parents, your spouse, a friend or a loved one? Do you feel that these ones are causing your grief? If so, why? Can anyone actually make you do or feel anything? Who is in charge of your life? Who is in charge of your feelings, your actions, your thoughts? The answer is so simple, yet it is one most do not wish to hear, and thus turn a deaf ear to, only you, jealous, only you. No one really has control over you, no one can make you do, feel, or think anything that you are not willing to. Remember that you are not just a flesh and bones thing. Your true essence is spirit, and spirit is as free as can be. You have but misperceived that you are only your physical body. It may seem like an easier life to believe such, for when you realize that you are spirit, and that you are eternal, then comes the thought that all does not end when your present physical life is over. If you continue on, somewhere else, then all that you are, all that you have been, and all that you will ever be is with you at all times, eternally. Talk about a heavy trip. There is much less responsibility and accountability to contend with if you are only in existence for a short 70 or 80 years. But if you exist eternally, then that is quite another matter. And, now, you ask, what does all that have to do with change? It has everything to do with it. Your planet is changing. Your planet is getting ready to take a giant leap forward in the evolutionary process, and all things, including you, are going to be affected and changed. How you weather that change depends upon how willing you are to evolve with your planet. The age of materiality is drawing to a close. That is why it is so pervasive at present. It is all coming to its climax, and you ones who are present upon your world right now have chosen to be a part of that climactic time. Earth is shifting in her frequency. She is going to go up a level, and you can either choose to go with her, or you can choose to resist the changes and leave. No, however, that should you choose the latter, you will re-emerge somewhere else, another time, to complete the class you chose to drop out of now. But, the choice will be totally your own, and so shall the accountability be your own. There will be no shifting the responsibility off onto another, because you will be standing alone, before God, in that time of accounting. The earth is going to continue to change in nearly every imaginable way. She is also going to change her magnetic fields, and eventually will also shift on her axis. Land masses, weather patterns, and life forms are going to alter, for it is all a part of the frequency upshifting process. What was, shall be no more, for a new and more glorious time is fast approaching. You are in the thick of it now, and are just about to cross the threshold. 
It is an exciting time, yet it is a time that shall be difficult for those who choose the difficult road of resistance to change. Your planet has been through this renewal cycle many, many times prior to this, and she will handle the change quite nicely. The real question is, how shall you handle it? There are those who are telling you that all this is but millennial madness and that those who speak such as I do here are fear mongers. That sort of statement is wherein the fear lies, for these are the ones who are resistant to what they see taking place. These are they who are not prepared and have not gone within to seek the truth. Those who have gone within know what the truth is, and that truth is all about change. Change has been going on since the beginning of time. There are, however, periods of accelerated change, when one age draws to a close and another age dawns. You are in such a time now. Will change stop once the new age fully arrives? No, for such is not possible in all of the creation. Change will never cease to exist so long as creation is occurring. There will, however, be a slowing process once the shift has fully taken place. But, when the next age dawns, the changes will once again begin to accelerate. You are not experiencing anything that has not gone on for eons throughout the cosmos. Many of you have, before now, been on planets during the changing process. Some learned, some did not. Some of you are here in the capacity of assistants, others are here only as students. But, even those here to assist are learning as well, for you cannot experience a physical life without some learning taking place. Those of you here to help are those who others just do not understand. Many of you are considered to be a new age weirdo or flake. But take heart in knowing that you stand in very good company, for those who pushed to found the United States of America were considered by most of their friends and neighbors to be troublemakers with a few screws loose. There was but a handful who stood in defiance of King George. So just because your numbers appear to be small does not mean that you cannot make a difference during this time of change. The secret is in the amount of energy that goes into it. Allow this all to settle in, and consider it in meditation. It is an individual choice each currently has to make. Many are there who are choosing to resist, but also there are many who are taking an active role in the change process. It may seem like the difficult path right now but, in the long run, it shall prove to be the easier road to have traveled. Your spiritual guides stand beside you, ready to assist you through the troublesome waters of this time. Get quiet, go within, and seek their advice. If you wish to call them angels, so be it, for there really is no difference. In peace, I leave you this day. I am Germain, the seventh ray, the violet ray of transmutation of God's holy white light. Salu. End quoting. Each and every living thing upon your planet is made up of the exact same materials. The combination of atoms and molecules are only arranged in different combinations to produce the varied life forms. The Earth itself is also a living entity, and is made up of those same molecules and atoms. So, you see, you are all further connected by your very makeup. You can choose to ignore or disbelieve the connection you have to each and everything upon the planet, and with the planet itself, but you cannot change the fact that these connections exist. There are a few scientists today who are beginning to understand and take seriously these interconnections and the relationship of a planet and its life forms. 
All it takes is a serious and open-minded study of nature to see that this is the case. Prior to earthquakes, volcano eruptions, etc., animal life will begin to leave the area where these events are about to occur. The Earth will also begin to emit low-frequency sound patterns, as the pressures beneath the crust build, preceding one of the events. Every animal, and man himself, has the capacity to pick up these low-frequency transmissions, as well as other signals emitted by Mother Earth. One of the mechanisms for this reception utilizes what your scientists call magnetite in the brain. Animal life acts on instinct, and leaves the area and moves to a place where these transmissions are no longer affecting them. Man, however, has overcome these subtle instincts by ignoring them, so he is caught off guard, and caught in the midst of the event. It is time that mankind learn from his animal kingdom brothers and sisters, for it is these built-in, given by creator instincts that, if heeded, can save your physical behinds. Pay attention to those strange headaches, those odd sounds in your head, those annoying aches and pains in your body, the feelings of agitation, restlessness, etc. These are very real, very physical byproducts of your interconnectedness with both your planet and with all the other life that is around you on your physical world. Please do not place me in the category of profit, for that is not the role I play. I am here simply to bring it to your attention what is probable to manifest due to current energy potentials, based on past and present data. Please understand that anything which may be forecast, is dependent on upon the consciousness of the life upon a planet. It is the combined consciousness of all beings upon a planet, which plays the greatest role in what will actually happen manifest in the physical domain, concerning the earth changes you ones continue to hear about. Have you noted just how many there are of late who seem to be repeating the same information? Why do you suppose that would be? I will tell you, when the probability of potential reaches what you might call a critical mass, that information, that data is vividly present for all upon the planet to tap into. Some are merely more sensitive to this energy of information. The nearer to the event you are, the stronger the energy is, and so more and more people pick up this information, which is available to all. More ones than you will ever know are aware of the information, but most will merely pass it off as their own imagination. But, as I stated above, it is very important that each and every one of you begin to pay close attention to those inner nudgings, those feelings of something just isn't quite right, those little bursts of hunches and visions, your dreams your intuitive nature in general. The influx of high-frequency energy upon Earth is helping to push along these changes, and this influx of energy is assisted by the collective consciousness as well. On some level, everyone and everything alive today knows that it is time for these changes to occur. It is this knowing, this consciousness of knowledge that is calling out for that influx of energy, that assistance from many sources, and thus bringing about the changes in the first place. It is all part of the evolutionary process of the universe, and closer to home, of the planet. One cannot be divided from the other, for all is connected and part of the greater whole called the creation. So you see, your American native peoples do have it right in that respect, for as they have always said, they are no greater or any lesser than is the tree, the rock, or the mouse. 
They have understood for thousands of years that they are connected to the greater whole, that they reside within the circle of creation as they put it. It is your modern day religions, which have taken man outside the sacred circle and made him separate from God, and creation. In fact, those same religions have long called American natives, and other untainted by the white man's views, pagans or heathens, or other worst names. Then consider me pagan as well. That separation of man from God is what has kept you ones in the bondage you are in. You have been taught that you have absolutely no power over anything, and that is the greatest lie there is. Dear ones, that is the lie which has kept you ones prisoners, and under the control of an elite few who themselves are mere puppets of the great deceiver himself. If you believe that you have no power over your existence, then you can be led about by the nose ring. Wake up and smell the coffee, children, for you and only you have power over your own existence. You do not need any intercession between you and God. You have tried to squeeze God, the creator of all that is, into a box that fits your limited level of knowledge. Instead, what you have succeeded in doing is putting yourselves inside a box, and the walls of the box have become the walls of your own self-created prisons. So, step outside the box, and take a good look at all there is in this universe in which you reside. There is nothing in this universe that is not available to you. What it takes however, is that you free yourselves from the bondage of your old habits and old beliefs, and from the lies of limitation that you have been taught. See the enormousness of what exists. What is limiting you? Money? Time? Freedom? These are all forms of the deception. You are a part of everything you see. There is nothing that you are separate from, except as exists in your own belief system. You are the only one who can limit you, and you are the only one who can set yourself free. And that process begins by understanding and knowing your relationship to, and your part within, all of creation. In the days that are coming upon your planet, every paradigm and every belief system you know is going to be challenged, for it is time for the old to pass away and the new to begin. These are changes which are going to affect every man, woman, and child upon your planet. The children being born today are different than even 10 years ago. Watch them. They are on a fast track. For they are here to experience, and be an active part of, the present and coming changes. Listen to them as they talk. Watch them as they play, for you will learn a great many things about your universe and about your planet. It may appear that we have wandered off our original subject of change, but I assure you that these things of which I speak are every bit as important a part of the ongoing changes as are the more violent earthquakes and weather patterns. To borrow a line from a popular movie, something wonderful is about to happen. Are you ready for it? Are you going to be an active or a passive participant? Are you going to assist in this change, or are you going to believe yourself to be a victim of it? These are choices every one of you are either now being confronted with, or will shortly be confronted with. How shall you answer? Let us draw this to a close. Thank you for your time, and I urge you all to consider the words of this message very carefully for it is a personal message for all. I am Violinio Saint Germain. I leave you as I came, in and with the holy white light radiance of Creator Source. Salu. Source, The Spectrum, News Review, the 5th of October 99 issue, Volume 1, Number 5, pages 61 to 64.
Editor's note, to all my listeners and viewers, please check out the description section of this video for the above reference links and further comments, along with access to the recommended starting set of Phoenix journals, as recommended by Commander Hatton to read first. The journals help unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions and actions of others from generation to generation, especially those of the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda is an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. As a matter of fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mentions that he would have a new name upon his return. Please like, share and subscribe to help support my YouTube channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.